how about this? Wait, I've got this trip where um, you'll pay to go to Russia, but if you win, you'll get your money back. <laughs> what? Sure. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, yeah, I, I spent two weeks in Russia. Um, wow. and while we were there, we put it together. We were like guests of the KGB. We were guests of some... <laughs> Uh, what? But, no way. That's amazing. You gotta, you gotta tell us more yeah, about that. When we fought, it was in, it was in like a chain link fence cage. So it was a cage, but it was, it was like chain link. There was no rubber coating. There was no nothing. Um, and there are puzzle mats on the on, underneath it. We were in the cold, uh, <laughs> wow. circus, not tent, but circus stadium. Um, the ring girls were, you know, the big feathers on the head and the high crotch, uh, and sure. you know, the leg thing together. Yeah. Back, Age. Backstage, there were lions and tigers and stuff in cages. So what? we were warm. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're listening to Bought with Nelly. Yeah. Beautiful. Welcome Good. to another episode of the Board with Nelly podcast. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, JCC, who's one of the biggest pro clubs creators on the planet, and Sam Smilin' Alvi. Thank you so much for being here. Um, just to give people a background of, of your resume, um, you fought since UFC Fight Night 47. Yeah, it's been a minute. Man, I've been in the UFC for, I think, nine years now. That's uh, That's something not a lot of people reach. That's a crazy milestone yeah. within itself. And then yeah. you have notable wins against guys like Nick Markward. You have a, a win against Rashad Evans. I mean, the, mm -hmm. like the definition of a veteran. Like, how, how does it feel to be in the game this uh, this long? I, I'm actually I'm thrilled. I mean, I, I never expected to be a fighter, let alone be one of the the few people that make it to year nine in the UFC. Uh, got my next fight coming up, and that'll be my 23rd fight in the organization. And people don't have 23 fights in the. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Your origin story is interesting too, because you <laughs> didn't really fight that much, and when you did fight, you didn't train for fights. Yeah, shoot, uh, I, 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 I never meant to be a fighter. I didn't know anything about it. I was probably seven and one as a pro before I ever heard of the UFC. Uh, it was just something I been hit. Somebody said, "Hey, you want to do it?" And I said, "Yeah, okay." And so I kept doing it. I was amateur, and then eventually said, "Hey, we'll pay you to fight here." And I said, "Sounds great." <laughs> And I guess I was pro. Uh, and I just fought all the time. I think I was amateur for like five months. Uh, fought in Russia, had won a heavyweight tournament, and apparently winning that tournament is what turned me pro. Um, but you didn't yeah. even know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but for the most part, I didn't know. They said if I yeah. win the thousand dollars oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. How do you fly out to, how did the Russia thing come about? Because I've heard you talk about this before, but I don't really, I want to know a little bit more about how does one just decide, hey, I'm going to go to compete in Russia for a couple of weeks. Yeah, so I fought up at uh, Lake of the Torches Casino, which is, which is up by you guys, uh, northern Wisconsin. Oh, really? Uh, nice, yeah. And I've, I have ended up fighting there many times as a younger professional, but uh I fought up there once or twice, and the guy who, a coach who had something to do with the promotions, oh, awesome. How about this? Wait, I've got this trip where um, you'll pay to go to Russia, but if you win, you'll get your money back. <laughs> what? Sure. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, yeah, I, I spent two weeks in Russia. Um, wow. and while we were there, we put it together. We were like guests of the KGB. We were guests of some. <laughs> Uh, what? But, no way. That's amazing. You gotta, you gotta tell us more yeah, about that. The, the the streets parted. I mean, it was like for for these guys, and they were they, all of Russia is about thirty years behind the United States, like in style and dress and the disco and whatever else. Um, everything was just except for the guys we were with. They were, I mean, they had the nicest cars. The streets parted for them. Anywhere we went, we got to everything for free. Um, they put us up at, um, they had a doctor, a doctor, uh, and he had this property. It was a huge property on the Volga River, which is the biggest river in Russia. And he had train cars all over his property. The train cars were refurbished into heated living accommodations. So we got to stay there for a couple of days or for two days. And uh, we got to, we, we, we went down and on the river, he had two giant holes drilled with the net going under it. 
So we got to pull the net up and all the fish that were in the net, his servants, his people went and cooked for dinner that night. Um, wow. And that two nights, other nights we were at this hotel that was again, 30 years styled 30 years, you know, before the United where we were in the States uh, and it was connected to a disco. So we got to go down there all day. Um, and when we fought, when we fought, it was in, it was in like a chain link fence cage. So it was a cage, but it was, it was like chain link. There was no rubber coating. There was no nothing. Um, and there are puzzle mats on the, on, underneath it. We were in the cold, uh, <laughs> wow. circus, not tent, but circus stadium. Um, the ring girls were, you know, the big feathers on the head and the high crotch, uh, and sure. you know, the thing together. Yeah. Back- Age backstage, there were lions and tigers and stuff in cages. So what? we were warm. <laughs> oh yeah, we were warming up. What? Next, lions and tigers and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I, that is something out of a movie. Yeah, Sam. that's cool. Yes. Oh, it was crazy. I and I remember. I mean, it was the warm up. It was like a closet, and I broke my toe like walking to the cage. Like there's a carpet or something turn up, and I just killed my foot. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> And I ended up winning the fight. It was two rounds, but if it was a tie going into the decision, we'd fight one, one more round. So we ended up fighting three rounds. I won the decision. I was Nothing. the only American over there. There were four of us and a coach uh, over wow. there. Um, and how, how old were, how old were you then? Like, because you got to feel like a little bit like your back's against the wall, being the <laughs> smiley yeah. American, fresh oh, yeah. faced guy fighting all these Russians. And you said it was heavyweight, right? And you don't compete heavyweight now, so. This one, I have no idea what weight this was. It was, it was in, just, yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> Did they even I, weigh you? I don't even know if they, they weighed you. <laughs> we all weighed, but it was time I hadn't fought. So, you know, I, I didn't I didn't know the 2.2 pound conversion. Right. Uh, yeah. so whatever it was, and I made weight, I think. He made weight. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they called me out. So I was an amateur. They called me out. They said, Sam Elvey with a record of two wins and one loss. And we came out and then they announced the guy I was fighting who I didn't know who I was fighting until he was in the cage with me. So they said, I'm big, hairy Russian guy with a record of uh, 30 wins, one loss. Uh, I mean, his, his resume was on. And so yeah. I'm they're talking, you know, my coach, uh, I was like, what is this? He said, I don't know, so I'll beat him. I said, okay, I do. And he came out and the dude, the dude was the thing was tall and he was hairy he looked like a sasquatch yeah uh, there and he tried to wrestle me for for every round and i i just stuffed enough of the takedowns and, and won the decision wow. that's amazing you gotta be like it's gotta be pretty difficult like, i mean now i imagine the level of preparation in the ufc most guys you know who you're fighting they're a wrestler they're a boxer they're a kickboxer sort of th- you're just turning up and you're seeing this guy for the first time is oh, it, yeah. uh, are the nerves big? Like, you must have this person. Is he going to shoot a double leg? Is he going to tornado kick Does from the start? Jiu-jitsu? Like, yeah, what's he going to do? Yeah. You're kind of like, you're like, what's he? <laughs> you no, know, what's funny about I've never had the nerves. I never, I didn't mean to be a fighter. I didn't train. Yeah. Like, my lifelong goal to do this, I just enjoyed doing it. So I've never had the nerves. I've got over 70 fights. I've never had the jitters backstage. I never had, you know, where people pace back and forth. I've been a coach now for a minute. Mm. And I, I've seen what nerves look like. I've never had them. Uh, so That's I was amazing. Back, that, that was probably as close to nerves as I've ever had is because as they, as they announced him, I mean, they said he had over 30 fights and mm. he was the champion of that. And I mean, his, they, they went on about how great this guy was. Ooh. I imagine yeah. just this dude that's tatted up like a typical Russian villain, like out of a movie stepping in the <laughs> cage. Oh yeah. Yeah, he had hair on his ears. I mean, the dude was <laughs> built for fighting. So you did amazing. well in Russia. That You had an amazing trip in Russia. Did you think like, hey, this is the fight game. Now, from now on, I'm going to be fighting in these random locations behind bears and, and like big hairy Russian dudes. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect because this, this that was my, if it was an amateur fight, that was my fourth amateur fight. Uh, and then I won, so I got... $800 or something. So maybe it was a pro fight. I don't, I don't know. But, but I got home on a Monday. Uh, two days later, I got a call from the same coach that, Hey, there's a heavyweight tournament this next weekend. You want to do it? I said, yeah, okay. So me, I, my girlfriend, wife now, we got in the car, drove up there and it was a, uh, it was a heavy, he didn't tell me it was a heavyweight tournament, but it was a heavyweight tournament. Uh, if I, if I won all of them, it'd be three fights in a night. And uh, I got three big, knockouts. one of three big knockouts. Wow. Uh, king of the cage. Three big knockouts, and they uh, they gave me thousand dollars, and then uh, a contract. 
I, I actually never signed. The, they never got me the contract, but uh, I just fought for King of the Cage. And they were in town, so essentially, I had the con- contract. Mm. That's insane. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is <laughs> insane. I mean, uh, I got I I could talk to you all day, but I, the one big thing for me is like, how do you when you sit there and you say you don't have nerves in those situations? Like normal people, like me and Nelly, like. You think about a fight in any altercation, someone's being like a douchebag in a bar and you get those nerves and you go through your head like, oh, I could, oh, what if I do something and it goes wrong? And you're there like in another country or obviously now a seasoned vet in the UFC. Like, what is it about your mind where you can disconnect that worry of what if I lose or have you just always been built that way? Like how, I, how does that I work? Did. I, 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 from fight one, I've just, I've enjoyed doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah by by the time I turned pro, I, I was starting to piece together that, you know, Jackie Chan wasn't real. Yeah. Uh, and, but that was my fight experiences that uh, <laughs> watching action movies. And uh, yeah, th- th- those aren't real. Right. Uh, yeah. I figured it out eventually. <laughs> but uh, it, that was real. I was just, I loved it. I, I mm. truly enjoyed what I do and what I got the opportunity to do. So, um, yeah. so the positives almost outweigh all the negatives for you, and it doesn't really yeah. come into your mind. I just I enjoyed it, so I got yeah. to go. Uh, I, I got to do something I enjoyed doing. Now I get to do the same thing, but I get paid for it. Yeah, uh, UFC is a bunch of suckers because I do it for free. <laughs> yeah, you don't, just, don't say that. <laughs> Stop saying that. You, you keep that on the down low. <laughs> if Uncle Dan is listening. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just what, what about like people around you? This is what I'm always curious about. I understand that maybe you don't have worries, but. How about the people around you and telling them that you're going to go to Russia or telling your girlfriend at the time, wife, hey, I got a fight in three days after I just had a trip from Russia where I knocked out this bear. You know, how, how, how do they react to these things? That's what I'm curious. Uh, they know about as, about as much of it as I did. Uh, so my mom, she was nervous. She, she would never watch until she, uh, she knew I was okay. And then I was just okay all the time, so she had no problem with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad was there in my corner the first couple times. Uh, my girl, my girlfriend, now wife, uh, she's been in my corner for every fight except Russia. Um, wow. And, wow. That's amazing. That's, That's really nice. We, we just, I just went with the flow. We, we didn't overthink anything. That's a really cool way to live, I think. And up until that point, you weren't training. So when did you actually start training for fights? Um... It would have been after my professional debut. Uh, I, I remember the summer. So I, I won the heavyweight tournament, and it was like three months later was my debut as a pro. And I remember I ran more, and I, me and my buddy Jordan, we went to a football field, and we did like bear calls and stuff every day, and that was that was what we did. Uh, shortly after that, I said, man, if they're going to pay, and I think I made $250 for a win, and I said, yeah, $250. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Fantastic. I said, I trained for this but they're going to pay me that much um <laughs> that's hilarious yeah, yeah. So i was i was taking uh weapons uh kobito uh so nunchucks and science stuff i was doing i was a green belt on that uh, while mm. i was in college uh and uh, <clears throat> i asked him hey could i do this at night after you're closed he said yeah let's do it so i built a gym or started a gym with in um mr metz's uh karate studio uh, and I just started advertising a little bit and I brought people in. My buddy Jordan came in and before I knew it, I was the head coach of a pretty good team in, in Wisconsin. Um, and I didn't have any idea what I was doing. <laughs> wow. You can't really learn jujitsu. So this is like YouTube was around, but not really. Uh, so you watch YouTube to, to learn how to do jujitsu. So mm. I, let's well, not get taken down. Then we don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah. And that Kind of don't get taken down and, and hit them real hard. So we just practice that. Um, yeah. And it was our team did. I mean, our team was one of the better teams in the state. Um, and it was me and Mr. Metz were the head of it. And we, we just had a had a heck of a time. What was the Amazing. scene like there? What was the scene in Wisconsin in MMA? It was a big wrestling place or what did they do mostly? Uh, no, it wasn't really anything. It was really? bigger than now. Like. That the so when I first started, there's no commission in Wisconsin, so there were fights every weekend, and so <laughs> I heard wow. every there were there was all the time, and so I and I sold a ton of tickets, or so every promotion wanted me on their card. So I just I had one year I fought 12, 12 times in one year. What? Uh, That's got to be some <laughs> sort of record, right? Surely. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, did just fought constantly. 
uh, by the end of the year, I was beat to hell. Like I, I had broken my wrist and didn't realize it. I had done a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I was just, I was limping to the finish line, um, but did real well. Um, <clears throat> and it was somewhere towards the end of my time in Wisconsin that the commission came in. And uh, oh, th- th- so this is a funny story. Uh, the commission came in and the first fight after the commission, I was up at Lake of the Georges Casino, which is an Indian reservation. Indian reservation said, we're not doing this commission thing. We do us because we're a sovereign nation. I don't know. Yeah, if you, yeah it's kind know, of the same. Yeah, yeah, I know you. I know about this. Yeah. So we, we were up there and there was a fight happened. I don't Somebody won, somebody lost. Then the, the promoter came out, not the promoter, the casino representative, uh, Michael Broderick was his name. He came out and said, yeah, and the and the government wants to come onto your property and take your rights and just firing these guys. Now, Michael Broderick is, is, is pale as I am, uh, but he, <laughs> and it was, he, he just fired these guys up. Yeah. Then the, uh, the announcer was Papa Schnaki. He was probably the greatest announcer I've ever had. I just loved him. short guy, yeah. but he was personality in any room. And so he got the microphone and said, yeah, Jeff go whitey. Smile and Sam Elvey. It's like some South Park shit. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> they brought me out. It was I mean, everyone there at that point, I'd bought up there many times. They all knew who I was. We uh, was fired up and I went out, got a big knockout. And it was, it was just a ton of fun, but, uh, they, 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 they were not letting the commission out on their property. Uh, it, the, the rest of the state, uh, the rest of the state, the commission killed everything. There are no fights in Wisconsin anymore. Really? Yeah. They put it, I mean, they cost money to use the commission. Uh, right. so now it's, I think uh, the Madtown Throwdown, I was their champion a bunch of years ago. I think they have like two shows a year now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duke Roof has had a show for a little bit, but that's really it. The commission just killed the MMA scene. Um, so now in Wisconsin, you'll have, you have gyms, but Duke Rufus is the only real UFC level gym. Uh, the Chosen Few is a good gym. Uh, they might have somebody in the UFC. Otherwise, they, they're, they've got like LFA and Combate kind of stuff. Um, so right now, Wisconsin's got very very small mma scene that's incredible i mean that's that's actually insane that you were in the wild wild west of the ufc days in, in, <laughs> in the good and the bad the money the bad the like the experience is something that no other person's ever going to have beside you i feel mm. yeah i i'm there aren't many people that'll be able to say what i've just said uh even from here on out i and i don't think there's ever going to be a guy who didn't know about the ufc that becomes a ufc nine year veteran. right that's right. Not remarkable you should write a book i'm, I'm, I'm in yeah <laughs> I'm in. yeah definitely because yeah, that's, that's 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 the that's the thing like now yeah the ufc everybody kind of knows mma and i think the more the, there's there's not going to be a lot of people coming through like you nowadays. Now people probably are coming through training specific martial arts from young ages because they want to be in the UFC. They want to be Conor McGregor. They want to be Khabib. They see these stars. Whereas you're just, you just winged it and ended up there. And that's amazing to me. That's amazing. <laughs> I, and, I, and I do realize that if past Sam was current Sam, I would have gotten my ass kicked by like everyone. Just right. did. The skill level of the sport has increased tremendously. Right. Uh, where uh, well, shoot, wrestlers have figured out how to do it, and stupid wrestlers. Well, that's it. it it's be- yeah, yeah. It's God become like wrestlers. a science now, isn't it? It's become a it's become a sport. Whereas back in the day, I guess it was just the hardest guy in the room, and now yeah. it's people's mind. They're using their minds to work out techniques and things that obviously you're at that level now. But when you started, like you say, you were just a tough guy with a good attitude yeah. who went out there and just swung. Yeah, apparently I, I hit hard and I don't fall over either. <laughs> But then, yeah. uh, in the early days, did you uh, sneak up on a lot of dudes? Because they could probably look at you and, you know, like, this random white guy, probably not going to be a challenge. But they don't know I, you've got I, a massive knockout <laughs> power. Yeah. I'm sure of it. And when I was younger, I'm not the stallion you look at. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was a chubby, pale ginger kid um, who apparently hit her. No, so I never had anyone pull out of fights. I mean, one time. <laughs> And then I got somebody else. It was just, I was a fighter that everybody thought they could beat. Right. Um, but he could. Uh, and so now, particularly nowadays where everyone's terrified of tarnishing their record and every fight is handpicked. Right. And chosen, right. Uh, which drives me nuts, but I understand it. Back then, 
uh, people that I, nobody thought that, you know, a chubby, smiley kid like that could be them. And then I go out there and do it, and I just kept doing it. You should have seen some of the the, the monsters I knocked out in my younger days. I mean, they were juiced to the gills. <laughs> right. But There's no footage? Know, oh, just sleep. There's one guy. What was his name? I wish uh, there was footage. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that on the you Instagram. you got to find us something. some footage somehow. I've actually, I've got a VHS tape that says Sam's Fights on it. Uh, and I don't, I don't know what fights are on it, but it's a Sam's fight. So it's that got a, bunch a gold mine. Yeah. It's you've a- got to crack that open. You've got to get <laughs> someone to put that on, on Insta for you or something. That's yeah. probably a, yeah. UFC uh, fight pass, put that on the, make it a little mini documentary. <laughs> my fights in Russia or my fights for the bears. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so after that, after you got going a little bit, how does the UFC come into the picture? Uh, so I was probably, like I said, seven and one, eight and one, something like that before I learned about the UFC. And then it, it was really my wife, like again, girlfriend or fiance at the time. Um, she, uh, she said, shoot, you're good at it. Let's do it. Let's make a run for it. Let's, let's see. I mean, you've got the talent. Let's do it. And so she really took the reins. I just, I just was willing to get hit. Um, well, she's I, I the was, manager also kind of, or she is now. Oh, okay. She, I'm, we're just partners i got you just okay my girlfriend um but she she was the one that looked forward and saw what could be uh so she, she said sam you can't you can't run your own gym anymore and make a living at this he said you've got to find real training so she did a bunch of research um in florida she was looking at att in california we we're looking at uh aka and also team quest we sent a bunch of emails out or she did anyways and we kind of started driving south um, and it was Team Quest. They emailed back first, so we took a right. And we ended up in uh, in California, and I've spent the last eleven years here with uh, Dan Henderson's Team Quest. And man, am I am I glad they emailed back? Right, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, amazing. And on one sense, I'm like, why does she want you to fight so much and get killed out there? With like, she's like, oh, get, I'll take this fight, take this gym, take the like. Another sense, like, <laughs> it's amazing that she supports you to that extent, like that. You know, that's your career path, and she wants you to succeed in it so much. You know. Yeah, I, I was in college. I graduated college. She she graduated with a couple degrees as well. She won America's Next Top Model somewhere in there. Um, so she, she's floated around, and she just she, – she, I wasn't getting hit. I wasn't getting beaten. None of my fights were even really that close. Really? Yeah, that makes sense. I think I was – 11 and one or 12 and two before I made it to California. Um, but I, it, every fight I won was like first round knockout, first round knockout, big submission. Mm. That the other thing I was just tearing people up and she, she found out about the UFC. She introduced me to it. I was just the guy. That- That's crazy. She introduced you to the UFC. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. To me, when I started, when I did a little bit of research on you, your wife seems like, like the, the most interesting character in, in, in the backstory here that doesn't maybe get as much exposure. She's your coach, your manager. Where does her even love for MMA and combat sports come from? Well, she and I, we were together before I ever fought. Um, so my first fight was some guy said, you want to fight? And said, yeah, okay, here, we'll go back. So this first, this first fight was, it was at a bar and there was a cage, but it was an outside event. And uh, I was fighting. It was, I don't remember the guy's name. He's a huge fella. Uh, it was it was heavyweight again. I was. This won't good. be on Share Share Dog, right, or any MMA uh, records page. I, I've got so many fights. <laughs> Probably. Okay, carry on. Sorry. But round one, I ruined the guy. I uh, broke his nose, splattered ever I thought I won. I didn't know the rules. Apparently, in MMA, they can get back up. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so, <laughs> And then he got back up the round the the outside it was so hot outside the mat was burning burning my feet uh so between rounds and or my corners weren't allowed in for whatever reason so between rounds i sat on the ground i put my feet up to the cage and i told my dad my my girlfriend said i oh, put water on my feet ice my feet ice my feet. but through the cage they're putting stuff onto onto my feet because the the canvas was so hot uh round two had <laughs> Dude beat the shit out of me, uh, but I was I was hooked, uh, and that, that was kind of my introduction. That's where she first was introduced to it. And uh, if, if you know my wife, she she's just I mean she will take 
anything that's good, make it great. It's just always been the case. So she saw a good career that I had, even though I wasn't making any money, but we were happy and good career. I had the degree already. I had this and that. She had her degrees and she said, well, let's make it better. And so mm. uh, she sent me off to California. And then she started like training with you or how, what, what did she continue practicing? If, if I may ask. So she, I'm a brown belt with one stripe in jujitsu. I think she's got three stripes as a brown belt she's better on the ground than I am, but yeah, that's what, that's where she really trains. She does all of it. She likes kickboxing. We were trying real hard to get her to fight uh Paige Van Zant in the bare knuckle. Box. <laughs> oh, really? Oh yeah. <laughs> My wife, Get out of me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. You think so? <laughs> well, of but course it, you do think so. Why would I what a dumb thing to be saying? <laughs> my, my wife would. Uh, one, my wife's six foot tall, Paige Van Zandt's, I don't know, 4'11 or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they'd be the same weight class. They'd both be 125 or 130, whatever it is in bare knuckle. Um, so I, I bet a fight. It might ha- still happen. We'll, we'll see. That'd be fun. I, I've yeah, heard really you say that she that. submits you in jujitsu, like... Oh yeah, she, frequently. She's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. What's she'll be doing it all. That's awesome. What, why is she, that? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. She's meaner than me. Oh really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't like rear naked jokes. She likes like relation jokes. <laughs> I guess the yin and the yang, right? You're you're you got the smile, and she's like you know the darker side, maybe or something. I don't know. <laughs> Is, is it a tough dynamic for your wife to also be your coach sometimes and, and sometimes pushing you and maybe telling you something that you don't want to hear? And there's a, obviously I can see a lot of potential issues there, but how does that work with you guys? No, I've never, we've never had any issue like that. Uh, I tell her the only thing she's not good at is if I lose, she's terrible backstage. Really? <laughs> she's right. Better than I am. Like, well, why did you do this or that or this? Yeah. It could just let me, let me <laughs> Let me soak for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. So with the exception of that, I, she, she's, no, we, we just make a wonderful team. But that's why you've got so far together, I reckon, because it's better than having, you know, like a hype man or someone who's just going to bullshit you or something. Like you've got someone there who tells you how it is. And that's, that's I think that's great in a relationship, but also coaching wise and everything. That's what right. you want, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, she, she does. And, and outside of her, I've got great coaches as well. Joe Daddy, mm. Steve. One of my coaches, uh, Gustavo Pulgues, Dan Henderson. He Dan Henderson, a coach. yeah. Dan Henderson, yeah, of course. Who's meaner in the backstage, Dan Henderson or, or your wife? When you it's lose? my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Barn, yeah. Wow. I was going to say, there's you hear a lot of stories in MMA with like the, the the fighter falling out with the coach, but when you have such a you know tough or such a strong dynamic with your partner, it seems like it's such a rarity that something would come in between that. Whereas like you hear stories every other day, oh, you know, Francis has a problem with his old coach and this guy has a whole problem with his old coach. It it's it's that relationship that's almost like more detriment or more stronger than even potentially having like a specified coach that you don't trust potentially, right? Uh, yeah, I, I've never had a problem with any of my coaches. Uh and then my wife is is in there and uh she she doesn't coach me so much in the practice room as she will in the 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 cage. Uh but then I've got my my it's nice having Dan Henderson at the head of everything I've done yeah. because Dan is the goat. he's as good as anyone's ever been. And he, he's beaten just about everyone. Um, sure. Having him at the head of, of, of my career is really helped. I, I can use his coaches. I know if I ever have a problem with his coaches, it's probably mine. Uh, <laughs> right. I've already helped him win every title. Um, and, and that man, the coaches were all, we're all friends. And you and Dan share the the same thing here, the the knockout power, which is kind of interesting that that he ended up being your coach. So we have, we have the same boxing coach. Oh, and that makes sense. Says I hit harder. What? Oh. Really? But he says <laughs> tells him I hit harder than he does. That's that's a that's yeah, a great that's position a, to be yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm British, so I obviously remember the H bomb on Bisbing, and oh. like it broke me a little bit. <laughs> I was so nervous for their rematch, like for the for the title. Even though Henderson was like forty four, just knowing uh, it was dangerous. And I mean, Mike's face after that fight. I was gonna say, I kind of think Hendo won that fight. I mean, you you <laughs> definitely. Uh, I think to say anyone won is um, like they were. It was so close. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, what a fight! Like Henderson it, after the fight. Um, didn't Henderson say something about it? He was like, "Oh, look at look at uh look at my face and look at yours. Who do you think won?" <laughs> Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Henderson also has a knockout against Fedor, right? 
Yeah, knocked oh, out yeah. Jesus. Henderson went up to heavyweight for a fight and said, let's do it. Yeah, does he, you guys ever talk about the old days and, and some of his older fights? I'm sure he's had some crazier fights too. Yeah, well, he was crazy because he was an Olympian beforehand. Uh, as soon as he started fighting, he was fighting the best in the world. Uh, whereas opposed to me, I was fighting whoever would fight me in Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> right. so we're a little different in that regard. Uh, and whenever, I mean, he was already the Olympian. So whenever he fought somewhere, somewhere he, uh, he would get treated like an Olympian. I, I remember a few years back I, I, before Reebok uh, was in the UFC, uh, I was talking to Hayabusa and Hayabusa was like, okay, so what kind of money are you looking to get for sponsorship? And I said, shoot, I, don't, I have no idea. So I went and asked Hendo. I said, Hendo, what should I ask him for? And Hendo said, well, I probably wouldn't do it for more than for less than 15000 <laughs> At which point I thought, yeah, full, I'm not getting 15000 <laughs> I, I, I said, if we talked 5000 would that be okay? And Hayabusa laughed at me. He said, no, I don't think we're going to, we're not even in the same ballpark. So said, well, what? Thing. And he said, we'll give you $500 in a pair of shorts. So I'll take- oh. $500 in a pair of shorts? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love every, every bit of it. That's amazing. Uh, and they were really nice shorts. <laughs> I'm sure. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but that was kind of the difference between Hendo and I. Was He was dead seriously. About $15,000 would probably be, be fair. For me, it was, I'll take $500 in a pair of shorts. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was a different world, yeah, yeah. Um, so after you started going a little bit in the UFC, got some fights under your belt. Um, how did how did that transition from fighting dudes in Russia to fighting professionals full time in, in the biggest association? Oh, well, the the biggest difference was there were no lions and tigers in the backstage anymore, <laughs> uh, which is pretty nice. That's good. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the UFC is just they've taken care of me i mean from fight one they have gone out of their way to make sure i was comfortable make sure my opponent's comfortable make sure they're they're putting on a performance and uh i i are making sure that they're giving us the ability to put on a performance and it's i fought for bellator i fought for the mfc i fought for russia i I fought around the king of the cage i fought for all the other big ones and they were all good and everyone you know wants you to say they're the best but hands down it was it was the ufc and there there really wasn't a close second Mm. you were still winning consistently in the earlier days as well like you 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 transitioned okay you didn't struggle at the beginning or anything like that yeah, I think I lost my, I did lose my UFC debut, almost won, like third, third round, if I had another 10 seconds, it would have been, would have been for me, but it didn't happen. Tom Watson, I, yeah. I fight terror, like I was not going to ever know in the UFC then, um, and uh, I, I was having a great time doing it, uh, it wasn't until the injury started, started adding up that I, I started losing. Yeah, a memorable fight here that uh, in Brazil. How was I, I'm always curious to talk to fighters that fought in Brazil, and you fought against a guy that was like predicted to be the next big thing, Cesar Ferreira, right? Ferreira, whatever he, his last name. Yeah, uh, he was. Uh, he was, I remember uh, the weigh-ins. So the dude, if you look at him, he looks like he was carved out of granite. I mean, the, he the is guy chiseled. Was, He's very chiseled. Mm. Yeah, I pull him uh, on screen. Uh, <laughs> I, I am not. I've always I've always joked that more of a Fedor than a Faber. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fine, Fedor is greatest ever. I can dig it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I, at every way, and I always ask my wife, "All right, who looked bigger? Who looked bigger?" And usually, I look um, because I'm a bigger middleweight, especially now. But back then, uh, sheesh, well, I mean, you can see your taller, but his shoulders are, and he had such a. Like at the way, and he put his forearm in me and started pushing me back. Is the first, so I just smiled at him and then knocked him out the next day. Um, hey. Yeah, it, it went up for Sam, but it, it was so much fun uh, walking out because Brazil gets into it. Every country except except America really gets into who their fighter is, mm. and so they're, they're all chanting, uh, "Via Mohair, Via Mohair is your guy." You're gonna then, die, yeah. <laughs> Go oh, F yourself. They were screaming both those as I come to the cage, but they were into it. They were chanting, going big time, big time. And then um, the, the fight was fun because he was a uh, capoeira. So he's throwing these spinning stuff and uh, he's looking all cool and ripped and shredded. When I got into the cage, sorry, when I got into the cage, I, I remember I turned to my wife and my co- corner uh, uh, poncho I said, Ooh, he got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> <You got bigger. laughs> then the 
fight started and he's doing all those cap aware stuff and spinning kicks and upwards elbows and all that. And, uh, and watching it back, you listen to the, the announcers talking. He said, well, Sam's got to do something at some point. He's got to punch. I don't know why he hasn't punched. He's got bomb, bomb. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Um, was that it was silent like, in there? Was it silent after that? Oh, yeah, for, for a quick, brief second it was. Because, I mean, everybody was like, oh, shit, he's really dead. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, and, you know, everyone put together, he'll probably walk again. And uh, that, Oh, my that, God. Crazy. That's, I, uh, I mean, not many people probably can say they knocked the guy in Brazil that's Brazilian. And yeah. the crowd go dead <laughs> for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, then after that, what are your, some other memorable fights from, from, from those days? Uh, I fought Nate Marquardt not too long after that, I think. Yeah, um, he did. Yeah, and, and he was he was fun because he was my coach on The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Shane Carwin was the head coach, but Shane Carwin just brought in his team. And Nate Marquardt was one of them. So I, I, I am so proud that I got to fight and then beat a coach of mine. I mean, nobody gets to do that. Nobody right. fights fight like I do. And I, I don't know that anyone's ever fought their coach. Um, and you, he, you, you're planning on calling Henderson out anytime soon. <laughs> no, I don't want to <laughs> you don't lose, yeah. <laughs> lose yeah. to a 50 year old or something now yeah. as well. <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, Nogira people won't let me forget it on the internet. Lord knows what happens if I lose to Henda. <laughs> yeah, now it's a brutal time to lose in, in, in MMA because like the internet's just so rude, they don't ever stop. Oh, um, I can't. I hate Twitter. Twitter's, Twitter's the worst. Toxic, it's eh? It's a cesspool. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't know you were on The Ultimate Fighter. Which season were you on? I was on season 16. Who, who were the coaches? Uh, Carwin versus Big Country. Oh, that's a fun one. That seems like mm. a fun yeah, one. I, the Let Me Bang Bro season. Oh, that, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How nice. are those guys in the house? I'm curious to know more about those guys. That was hilarious. Yeah, he is so... I, everyone's always disappointed with my ultimate fighter because it was really boring. It was six weeks and you're stuck in a house with 16, well, 15 other dudes. Right. And don't give you anything but beer. You're not allowed books. You're not allowed radio. You're not allowed TV. You're not allowed anything. Why not books? Like, because they want you to fight. They want, they want you to get liquored up and talk wow, shit. Wow. That's uh, hilarious. <laughs> of a kind of sort of, uh, uh, MMA competition, but really it's a reality show. Yeah. So every room of the house is, there's liquor everywhere and they just try and get everyone good and liquored. And uh, I believe it was Julian was his name. I believe that was the day he just lost. So he went and got liquored up and lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet. I mean, that's got to, I never knew it was that like that environment. It's sort of like almost prison, right? It's got to be a little bit yeah. like that. Like you're watching over your shoulder the whole time. You don't really trust anyone. You're kind of like, I'm going to end up fighting one of you very soon. And there's cameras. It's, it's going to be quite uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 It, it was, you have to, and you always have your necklace on. That's your speaker, so all times they can hear anything. So if something happens, all the camera guys. The rule is, if you see the camera guys moving, follow them, and you'll get on TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> if you watch the clips of me and Julian, or of Julian freaking out. I'm in every scene. Are you really? I, yeah, I got. I actually now I'm gonna look that up. I'm I gotta. Yeah. I gotta rewatch yeah. that. I gotta rewatch Let that. Let me piece. bang, bro. Yeah, I could care less if he was gonna bang or punch. <laughs> <laughs> camera so i was just standing around oh no don't do that oh it's uh, <laughs> cameras so they, they just follow the cameras <laughs> yeah, yeah watching the footage i mean I, this was such a different world like this was such a different time because the ultimate fighter was such a shit show but it was so fun to watch uh-huh yeah, yeah like I, I don't know i think we could just make a whole podcast about like ultimate fighter i feel like that's, oh, yeah. a, that's a phenomenal that should be studied like I feel like there should be like group sessions and studying these bros living in a house you know like <laughs> there's probably so much there to analyze you know yeah yeah, and you'll get different reactions from different people like I thought the show was incredibly boring but I, I've met Jesse Taylor's a friend of mine Tom Galicchio's a friend of mine Joe Daddy they all loved it they had a blast on it man I maybe my attention span is just you know too good or not good yeah, enough yeah maybe not good enough yeah, yeah. Uh, what did those guys ever fight ever again? The, the, like, what happened to those guys? You know? Uh, yeah, Justin Taylor's still fighting. He, it's hard for him to find anybody to fight him. Uh, like, he just people won't fight him. Really? Uh, yeah, he's just good, and everyone kind of knows it. Um, and, and nobody wants to lose to him because he's an old dog. He's a journeyman. Uh, mm. Joe Daddy, he has not fought since he lost the second show. 
You know, he, he got brought back on the comeback season, uh, and he, he didn't fight after the season. Tom, uh, he, he's got a gym in uh, Tennessee right now. Oh, uh, nice. MMA militia, and that, that's doing real well for him. Um, and, yeah, that, that's it, how, how – some of them fought again. Tom had his one fight in the UFC, but lost that. The UFC didn't hold on to him. Uh, so I, I, he's doing grappling tournaments here and there, but really just put himself into his coaching. Right. I mean, these guys are still, I mean, dedicated to the sport, right? They still want to continue that. I guess from an, from an outsider looking in, maybe you think all oh, these guys are just clowns who wanted to be on TV, but it seems like they still wanted to have a career in the sport. Yeah. Especially that last season, the comeback season. Especially. Uh, it was everybody had been a fighter their whole life, and they're getting this second shot at at winning the title. Fair enough. Um, well, talk to me about your your upcoming fight. Yeah, so I'm fighting Phil Hawes on February 5th, um, and I, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a good one. We I just found out we're main card. Oh, which nice. Is nice. Beautiful. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I didn't think I was going to be nice. Main card. Um, but yeah, Phil, he, he's an animal. He, he's coming off one loss, uh, but he's been on a tear before that so i'm gonna go out there and then try and uh try and give him two losses yeah look, look, yeah go ahead sorry he, go ahead. Uh, yeah I, I thought phil Hawes was who i thought yes another absolute freakazoid <laughs> right like he's built like he should be on the stage with phil heath and stuff like that like he's ripped oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, i'm guessing he's a bit of a small and he's 180 180 i mean I, i've seen a few of his fights but yeah, yeah he's big usually guy. The guy he's probably the strongest guy in the cage but uh mm. he's I mean, he's only 5'11", I think, which is real yeah. short for the weight class. Um, yeah. Very athletic, was a D1 wrestler, but uh, since then he, he strikes more than anything. He's got a big hook, um, and he, his head coach is a Muay Thai guy. He, he spent some time in Thailand too, Phil has. Um, so, he, yeah, he really goes falls back on his, uh, his striking. And he, it's mm. good. You know what? The fans like it. Yeah. Who gives you the most trouble? What kind of fighter gives you the most trouble? Is it a wrestler? No, I, I've got the fourth highest takedown defense in UFC history. What? Really? The, yeah, I, I have a to take down. That's uh, a cool stat. That's a really right? cool stat, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm very proud of that. Um, mm. And it goes back to at the beginning, my only option was don't get taken down. So I just instilled in myself, be terrified of takedowns. Don't let it happen. And uh, it, it, it's worked out to, to be a really, really fun stat for me. Um and was there another part of the question? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. I was, I was, just, I was just curious to, to you know, what your what your biggest thing, I guess, because you started so late and, and you weren't really training MMA before that. I'm sure there's something you wish you did as a kid. And what would that be? Like, which discipline? Uh, the more I, wrestling. I wish wrestling, I yeah. I, that's, that's what I tell everyone. Everyone asks, well, what should I do to be a, to wrestle? Wrestle as much as you can for as long as you can. Um, everything else will fall into place, but wrestle. Um, but it, but it's real. If you watch my Elias Theodoro fight, when I fought Elias, it is about the worst fight you'll ever watch. So maybe don't watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's uh, the Canadian guy. I know that guy. Yeah. yeah. Great guy. Love him personally. He's just, yeah, he, he, I lost, but it was for 15 minutes. He kicked at my legs and ran away from me. Uh, and, and there've been a few fighters that have done that now. Talos Latis did that to me. Uh, there, there've been a few guys that, that just kick and try and outpoint me. Right. And he's notorious for that though. He's known for having a few fights where he's just like trying to pick up some easy points and dodge the fight. Yeah. That's, that's why he got cut. I mean, he was on, I think he won six in a row or he won a know. fight and then he got cut. That's the, that was the big story. If I remember, right. Mm. Yeah. And it was, it, nobody enjoyed watching him uh, because he, he was just such a point fighter. Um, but he laid the blueprint for how to beat me. If you want to beat me, point, don't fight me. Just point. <laughs> right. I, I, I do know I am slow. Uh, I hit like a truck, but it's, I am slower. So it, it is, um, he had the right idea of, of kick and run, kick and run. And I had no answer for it. I've been working on it. It's been a few years now, so I, I've gotten better at it, but, uh, I'm still, still always fearing that the next guy is going to try and do the same right. thing. Well, I mean, your takedown better be high rated in the, the, the video game, right? If, if. They better have that right, because I know EA sometimes messes up those stats, mm. especially on footballers. They mess up the stats, so they better have your takedown like <laughs> pretty high. Um, as you as you're approaching kind of this later stage in your career, you're now kind of the guy that's welcoming the new generation. I feel like you're the fight that like some young kid is coming up. They want a, a little bit more experienced fighter. 
do you feel like you have a different kind of role now in the in the UFC than when you first started out? Yeah, you know the term is a uh, gatekeeper. Um, gatekeeper. It, okay, I never heard that. Yeah. As much as I know, I could beat the champion. As much as I know, I, I also know I am many fights and many wins away from getting the opportunity. Um, so I'm happy to be the gatekeeper right now until I can put my string of wins together and become the, you know, the the challenger. Uh, that there they'll be. I, I'm the gatekeeper to the top fifteen. I, I'm going to beat the gatekeeper of the top ten. Then I'm going to beat the gatekeeper of the top five, and then I'll then I'll get get to championship spot. Uh, I've just got to start putting everything together. Yeah, I mean, if you're a casual looking at your record, I think you're looking at the losses. But when I watch back the fights, a lot of close fights. You also have a draw in there. It, I mean, you have a, what, one split decision, unanimous, another split. You have two split decisions and a draw. No, sorry. Yeah, yeah three split decisions, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the last five last fights. fights. I think I won five. Uh, yeah, what happened? What, what, what Was the judging just not your way that night? It, my, what I what I think happens is uh, the UFC, the morning of their fights, they go to the Home Depot and they say, hey, I'm looking for three judges, three judges. You know, <laughs> the guys in the van. Yeah, yeah. Actually. They is it real that bad? That's gotten that bad. Oh, the, the, and I don't know if it's the judge's fault or if it's the commission's fault. Commissions, I mean, anytime the government gets involved in anything, they tend to make things worse. And as the UFC is getting bigger... The government is getting bigger. The commissions are getting bigger. And they're putting too much thought into judging a fight. Um, if you look at any of those fights, I, I haven't been outstruck in six fights. Every round, I throw more, I land more uh, across the board, and I'm still losing the fights. Um, so where are you losing? Is it octa oct time in the middle? Is it takedown? It's not takedown. You're obviously one of the better defenders. So what, what is it? Uh, so the draw, I outstruck him three rounds to none. In the third round, I took a big elbow. It put me on my butt. I kind of got back up. And then I uppercut up. I beat him up for the most of the rest of the round, but he caught me with the big. One of the judges called it a 10-8. 10-8 rounds are ruining the sport. I hate 10-8 rounds. I mean, there should no be no 10-8 rounds. Um, I, I am a guy. I like my back foot on the cage. I've been working on that. It hasn't. My, my last fight, I got poked in the eye seven times. Um, and so I <laughs> Oh, yeah, really? I was. Oh, the guy. I still lost the fight, and he had two points taken from him. Uh, I, so, may I? Can you appeal uh, that kind of stuff, or no? You can't, right? Not really. Once it's announced, uh, because it's not. It's not the. I mean, it's the fighter's fault that he poked me in the eye. The cheater. Um, <laughs> right, right. Not his fault that the judges screwed it up. Because uh, me and JCC were talking to. Sorry, to interrupt you. We're talking to this other fighter, um, Alexa Ch Chamar. He's under a steep base, um gym. Okay. And he lost his last fight, uh, second last fight. The guy was holding the fence, like, uh -huh. and, he, and he got a verbal warning five times. Ooh. And in, and it was a split decision loss. And uh, even in the last round, when there was like one minute left, you think like, okay, the ref saw it. He's about to address him. He pulls him apart, doesn't deduct a point, gives him a warning with a one minute left in the fight. Like, who cares about a warning? And yeah, they yeah. go back into position or they like continue the fight and he loses a split decision. But he was saying that he was um, sending a video to the commission trying to appeal it. it. It can be. It just doesn't happen often. It doesn't. Yeah. Maybe you don't even get a, your way, right? You can send it, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. If the commission were to do that, they'd have to admit they were wrong. And uh, they rarely do that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're wrong. They just say, no, it was your fault. My fault. <laughs> right. Yeah. Your eyes were closed. You wouldn't have gotten poked in them. So, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. The, the technique to defend I've it. I've seen that's Jackie Chan movies. Out. That's how you do it. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I can't think of any examples where fights have, uh, apart from for drug use, uh, proven drug use, I can't think of anyone where they've overturned it or anything. The most blatant one I ever remember was, it was I believe it was uh, Jorge Mazdaval fight. Uh, Jake Allenberger. Jake's foot, he went to shoot, got stuck under the cage. It slipped into the under the cage in between the mat and the cage where yeah. he couldn't pull his foot out. And it, it was obviously the cage, there was the construction crews or the cage fight, and they wouldn't overturn. That's crazy. I don't remember that. Did you see that one, JCC? Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. It was a while yeah. ago, but I remember that famous yeah. clip. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brutal. Yeah, and it was. I was like, why, how was that? And nothing happened. And I know yeah. Jake. Yeah, no, it's 
So I, I'm, I've lost a miserable. Yeah. And then obviously in the UFC, obviously you, you get paid to win. So something yeah. like that, it's cutting your paycheck in half. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's Altering the split on that? Yeah. How does, how does that work? Is it like 60, 40, 70, 30? It's not 50. Uh, yeah. Depending on but typically it's 50 50 50 50 okay interesting i didn't know that okay cool um besides i'm i want to talk to you guys i've seen a lot of your interviews i want to talk a little bit about yourself um what you do outside the octagon uh, you said you do some yoga what else do you enjoy besides you know beating people up i said i do yoga i thought you did maybe i'm wrong that's that's no, I'm, i'll take an l on that one if that's true if that's not true I, <laughs> you I, should I, try yoga it's really great <laughs> <laughs> it nearly runs a yoga class on zoom i'll send you a link <laughs> I don't stretch or anything. Right, you don't stretch? <laughs> no, almost never. <laughs> really? That's insane. I work for Hendo. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. When, when, I, when I get to the WWE someday, I'll probably start I'll probably start stretching a lot. You're still a young guy. Yeah, I guess you don't need to stretch, right? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what, what else do you do? What else do you enjoy doing? Uh, I've got... I, I enjoy making kids. Um <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> I, I've got, um, and they're all you know eight and eight and under. Uh, so my spare time is with them, and it's I'm learning instrument. Every kid's getting a new instrument, so I'm learning instruments. I'm now uh, as soon as this fight's over, I go back to Tennessee, and I'm coaching two baseball leagues. Uh, I, uh, I, I've always coached at my gyms in Tennessee. I'm, I'm not yet, but I'm figuring that out. It's just, I'm always doing something with, with my kids uh, that I've just got, I've got a lot of them. And, yeah. so, and you're making content like on TikTok and then stuff like that. Yeah. How, yeah. How did that come about? Uh, I, I, I just fell in love with TikTok and, uh, I, I started talking to some people and they make money doing this stuff. So I said, man, I, I can talk for 60 seconds. I'm great at <laughs> you're great for an hour i mean uh, don't sell yourself short <laughs> I, I i love the sound of my own voice it's crazy uh and tiktok was kind of designed for people like me uh <laughs> talent that most people don't have and that i hit hard and i can talk about it so it's great um that, that i i've thought about doing a podcast with you guys but i the, a weakness i'm terrible at asking questions right uh, oh really always been bad at my entire career it's people asking me questions just because of my and so i've gotten real good at answering but uh asking i never have to do it <laughs> yeah sometimes you get in deep waters and, and you don't know where to go but for the most part it's just a, it's just like if we were talking in person at a bar or something we just it's a natural conversation i i like to do it at least there's also yeah. some niche podcasts though like some people do it just on their own just record yeah, an hour yeah, on their own, own talk own. about yeah. your experiences talk about your life i mean it's been interesting man you could definitely explore that I'm doing that on YouTube now. So about, I don't know, four or five months ago, I started my YouTube channel. It's Smile and Sam on YouTube. And I've, got some, I've got some um, some content, you know, of me sparring and fighting stuff, but a lot of it is me talking um, mm. for, for 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, th- this last was about uh, was it weight cut or where my weight is at. Oh, it was about the, the diet that the UFC has got me on this time. Mm. Uh, I'm happy time than I've ever been for fights before, but I'm doing – I'm following the UFC's guidelines for it, and they're feeding me and doing all that. Okay. Um, I'm a little heavier. My body's not used to it. But then I talked about the difference between how I felt this camp and other camps. Um, so nice. I've got 15 years of experience. I'm a coach. I've got over 70 fights. I've got a ton of stories. Um, I bet. I bet. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, you got to use that, man. Yeah, like, people like me, fans of the sport, would love that. I mean, you're a vet, so it's a lot of a lot of knowledge and experience to share. Not only that he's a vet, but like he has stories that are like you'll never hear again because the journey to the UFC is so different now than it was when when he started. So to me, yeah. that's the I mean, uh, you know, a well of knowledge. And I saw some of your promo videos; those are pretty funny. Like your sketch videos um, on YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah, those are those are class. So I, I really enjoyed those. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, JC. I was going to ask a question about. I've seen a couple of clips from fights and obviously fights back in the day where you like you shaved the chest hair right once and you've done the hair shave and all these sort of wacky things. You got anything so, planned for the fifth? So I always I always get the smiley face in the back of my head. Uh, so th- there's another story about that. It's not a chest sh- chest shave. It's a it's a I, I spray tanned myself. Oh okay. Uh, but it says perfect tan, which is the sponsor. Right. I lost fifty thousand dollars doing that. What? Uh, <laughs> Why? Oh, let me, so, what policy? Like UFC or something? I, yes, UFC. I didn't know it. 
and I would put that, but you're not allowed to advertise on yourself like that. Instead of cheapens yeah. the order, you're not allowed to get tattoos of Eda Joe's or that's uh, so dumb. It's you well, know the tattoos it, is extreme. The tattoos is extreme because like, what if you got some stupid tattoo from before and like I don't know, you got a Mc, McDonald's logo that you I don't know, yeah. you're drunk one night and did it like <laughs> so you can't fight now until you get that removed. <laughs> With, they would know about it before they signed it. They, they, oh. and they, and I, and I guess like if you had the McDonald's thing, unless it was you were paid for it. Like if you had a McDonald's thing, but they was they weren't paid for it, then it's not a sponsorship, so they can't say anything, right? Right, right. But, yeah. So weighed in, and it was on my chest, flex, and yeah, everything's great. No, that work. The next, day, I was walking to the cage. I got to the cage, took everything off. I mean, hey, you got to take that off your chest. I said, take what off my chest? It's not coming off. It's it's tan. <laughs> Just there with a towel, like rubbing the chest. All right, Dan Kelly went out there, knocked him out real quick. Uh, came backstage, and I got told by like six or seven people, Dana's pissed. No, said, you, that was a hell of a knockout. But you are not. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. I said you could get fined. No, I please don't find me. I didn't know. Oh my god! You got your dream of not getting paid, I guess, because you have to pay back money after you won. <laughs> yeah. So, so they didn't find me, but they they didn't let me win the the bonus. That's uh, okay. That's come on. That's a that's a that's an L. That's, that's an L. But perfect. Yeah. He said they'll make it up. I get fifty thousand dollars of spray tan. Um, ah. that's not bad. <laughs> okay. I guess, I guess I would. Yeah. <laughs> See my hand. I wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. So now it's I just do it as kind of a joke to myself. Is before every fight I go and get spray tan. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's hilarious. Nobody but you guys and me know about it. Well, now we but, know. Uh, yeah, people should hear. This yeah. is what I'm saying. These are the stories we need to hear, like on a, on a podcast or your own video. I mean, this is a hundred percent. These are amazing. These are gold. Hey, you saw. I told the story a couple times, and uh, people get upset for me. Like, oh, I can't believe the UFC would do it. Uh, say, no, it's funny. It's I. I, I think I. At this point, I still would have preferred the fifty grand. But by the time, oh, man, the story is going to be worth more than the fifty. Grand. That's true. It's true. That's true. It's true. But it's getting there. But people want to be offended on my behalf, so it's it, I'm over it, kind of. Yeah. I was gonna with your Russian story. There's a guy named Bert Kreischer. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a comedian. He has a Russian mob story. I I've heard that. He's story. built a whole career starting from that story. Like that video has oh, fifty nice. million views. Like it's crazy. So I feel like if you have a Russian, if you have a good Russian story, use good, it right? to take oh, yeah. off. <laughs> I got see. I gotta learn how to. I gotta learn how to use YouTube first. Like I'm still. <laughs> you just need some to, thumbnails. I can see. I can. I can help you with some thumbnails. Everything else, yeah, yeah probably, and titles. Told me last week I need thumbnails. Like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, and I gotta figure out like the hashtags aren't the same on. I don't think they're the same on YouTube as they are on Instagram. So I gotta figure. out. So I'm going to save my best stuff for once I really get rolling with, with it. Yeah, some of these titles, like you, have a, you have a title called Trim 07C77F89. I don't know what the hell happened here. Like a robot wrote the title. I got me. I, I must have missed something. <laughs> um, I, we're, we've done an hour. I hope you, hope you had a good time. Um, you know, your upcoming fight is what, next week? Next Friday, the 5th. Next Friday. Friday. What card is that? Let me just... Pull that up. UFC Fight Night. What number is? What number are we at? I think it's ESPN ninety two. It's Strickland versus uh, Hermanson. Yeah, I mean, just talk about that for a second. Fight Night two hundred, and you start on forty seven. Incredible! I mean, incredible. You guys like me and JC love vets like you. You're the reason the sport is thriving today. Someone needs to lay the foundation for what the sport 100%. is. So. I, I I love what the sport has given me. I love what I've been able to give back to the sport and to fans like you guys. Uh, I I really I love everything about this life I've I've created, and I wouldn't have this life without what the UFC has helped me do. So I, I I'll be forever indebted to them. But uh, I'm I'm gonna go out there and, and pay, start paying it back a little bit more this, this upcoming fr- uh, Saturday. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I want to see you get that win and call out Strickland personally as a fan. And that's like the good versus evil. I. I Strickland, like 10 minutes before I, I called you guys, I was far. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's not a fight I'm calling out. Oh. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, fair I, enough. I'm not going to call Hendo out. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's fair. Fair enough. Beautiful. Thanks for your time again. I'll leave links to, I don't know, your channel, um, your, your Instagram, your TikTok, all that stuff. So if you want to follow, uh, links are going to be down below. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you guys for wanting me on and having me on. Beautiful. Thanks, yeah, It's lovely to meet well. you, Sam. 
Hey, nice yeah, no, to- thanks. Yeah, see you later, man. So nice to meet you. All right, we'll catch you guys later. See you later. Best of luck, man. See you in a bit.